hello children i hope you all doing good welcome you all to grade 6 science today we are moving on to give a start to second term work unit 4 energy in day to day life yes before starting the lesson i would like to ask some questions from you all first one just imagine when you are in a morning assembly sometimes you feel dizzy or fainting why is that yes so many reasons are coming to your mind right yes maybe lack of food and water so my second question is why do we eat food yes obviously to get energy now you have an idea about that we need energy to perform our day to day activities and also if we are lack of energy we have to face so many difficulties okay now we know we need energy to do day to day activities here i have given some examples for activities pulling a log using a rope carrying heavy load loading of goods to a vehicle so to do all these activities we need energy that means without energy we are not able to do any activity well so we can define the term energy as the ability to do work so here now you can see some energetic activities carrying heavy load and running here you can see someone is pulling a log using a rope okay now we will do an activity which is in your textbook page number 50 so here we are going to prepare a wind propeller i have given things you need to prepare this object in here and please go through your textbook for the method now just imagine a wind propeller is in your hand what can you observe now nothing that means it will remain without rotating now take your wind propeller near to a fan now what can you observe yes it starts to rotate now again switch off the fan and observe it it stopped now you can understand when there is wind only the wind propeller starts to rotate that means wind propeller got energy by the blowing wind here you can see a picture of wind propeller and after we are taking it near to a fan hello children i hope you all doing good welcome you all to grade 6 science today we are moving on to give a start to second term work unit 4 energy in day to day life now here we are going to talk about solar thermal stove or cooker this uses the energy of direct sunlight to heat cook or pasteurized drink and other food materials the cost is less and 
no fuel is used. If I talk about the right side box cooker picture, you can see a reflector, a glass or plastic cover, black colored interior and a cooking pot. Normally, we use reflector to reflect the sun rays from sun into the box. And glass or plastic cover is used as a transparent medium to send reflected sun rays into the box. Because of the black colored interior, it absorbs more and more heat. Because of that, the heat inside the box will be increased. By using that heat, we can cook or heat something. That is the main purpose and main purposes of using those parts. So now you can go through your textbook page number 51 and prepare your own solar thermal box stove. And also you can use it to prepare something or cook something, right? So here the energy used here is what? Solar or thermal energy. Now you have an idea. Here when we are preparing a solar thermal box stove, mainly we used solar energy that is energy from sun. Okay, when you are doing previous activity, there were two sensations in water. Those are cold and hot. So, this expression of cold and hot is known as temperature. Normally, we use thermometers to measure the temperature. The units that we use to measure temperature, Celsius, Fahrenheit and Kelvin. And you should know Kelvin is the standard international unit. That means Kelvin is the SI unit. What is the meaning of SI unit? That means all over the world is using this Kelvin as the main unit of measuring temperature. In this slide, I have given some more types of thermometers mercury in glass thermometer and also digital thermometer and also there are some important facts about, the, about them so you can go through this and please keep in your mind mercury is one of the solid form metal so when we are handling mercury in glass thermometers we should be very careful because it's not good for health and also for the nature. Now we have already done two types of energy sources. What are they? Sun and wind. A part of these two, there are so many energy sources. What are they? Now you can see there are so many energy sources in this slide. Sun, biomass, fossil fuels, wind, running water, sea waves, tidal waves, geothermal energy and nuclear energy. Before starting about the other energy sources, I have given you a small activity. So here, you have to find what are the sources of energy that we can use to do these 
activities. I will tell you one. Okay, if we take the first activity, cooking, what are the things that we can take as the energy time, energy source? Yes, normally at home we are using LP gas and also we are using dried woods, coconut shells and also now you know about soda stove. Okay, so here we can write coconut shells, dried woods and also LP gas as the sources of energy that we can use to do cooking. Like that, now you have to write what are the energy sources that we can use to do the following activities. Types of energy sources. Now we'll see about these energy sources one by one. First one is sun. The main natural energy source, sun is essential for the existence of life on earth. I have given some examples. First one, to produce food in green plants, drying grains and clothes. Solar water heaters are used to heat water. Solar panels are used to produce electricity. If we talk about the first example, what is known as photosynthesis process? Yes, photosynthesis process is the production of food in green plants. You have already learned about this process in Unit 1. So here in this process, energy from sun, solar energy is contained in food as the energy source. Here you can see a picture of photosynthesis process in right corner. They are the main efficient co components are light energy, carbon dioxide, water and the presence of chlorophyll in the plant. So then we have all these components only we plants can do photosynthesis process and produce oxygen and sugar. Here you can see a picture of solar water heater. By using solar heat, heat absorbers, solar heat can be absorbed and transferred to the water tank. And we can convert cold water into hot water. And also I have put some pictures of drying grains and drying clothes here. You can have some important facts on sun by reading this slide too about its diameter, mass and also total mass. This shows how can we convert solar energy to electricity. Solar panels are located on the rooftops and they absorb solar energy during the daytime. And they are absorbed so sunlight is converted into direct current electricity. And that direct current will be converted into alternative current before the distribution. We can use this power or electricity during the night time. So that is the main importance of using these solar panels. Because the cost for these productions are very less. Okay, now let's see what is biomass. Plant or animal materials which can be used as a fuel are known as biomass. Here I have given you so many examples for biomass. Firewood, coconut shells, coal, rotten vegetables, hay, sawdust, rice bran, rotten food materials, agricultural waste. Biomass also contains solar energy. Now we know, during the photosynthesis process, plants absorb sunlight. So that means plants contain solar energy. And as we like animals are heterotrophic, we depend on plants directly or indirectly. That means 
we animals also contain solar energy that's why we can say biomass also contains solar energy here here you can see some main types of biomass garbage crops alcohol fuels landfill gases wood and also a factory which use biomass as the energy source i have given two pictures please go through and have a small idea about this biomass okay i hope now you you know about biomass now let's do an activity now we are going to prepare one of the ancient stove or cooker but still some people are using this stove that is known as so dust stove or else kudu lipper this is very simple economical hearth which can be used to cook meals and to boil water this is in your textbook page number 54 and 55 here we use so dust as the type of biomass too that means so dust also can be taken as one type of a biomass right here this is a picture of prepared soda stove or cooker third energy source is fossil fuel what are fossil fuels fossil fuels are fuels that come from very old life forms that decomposed over a long period of time what are all life forms mainly plants and animals right solar energy is stored in the fossil fuel too why is that because here also we are going to talk about plant lives and animals life now you know how they contain these solar energy types so the main examples for fossil fuels are coal petroleum oil like petrol diesel and kerosene and also petroleum gases now tell me similarities and differences between biomass and fossil fuels the main similarity is both are composed of dead waste particles of animals and plants the difference between these two is the time duration for the production normally fossil fuels take a long period of time to form but not in biomass here you are given a homework to do please find and prepare a list of countries where fossil fuel is available this cycle shows the production of fossil and fossil fuels If we move on to the left side picture you can see the color of smoke when burning fossil fuels it releases harmful gases and particles to the environment and cause some bad impacts like air pollution global warming and rising sea levels because of these air pollutions and bad effects like us human and animals also have to face so many diseases like respiratory diseases skin diseases and you can go through this cycle and and have a small idea about how these forms are formed so today we have learned three types of energy sources so i'm going to conclude the class for today and let's meet up with the second part of this lesson with some more energy sources thank you have a nice day